The guillotine emerged during the French Revolution as a symbol of defiance against the monarchy. It was known as a nation's razor, and throughout a short period of time, there would be a huge number of executions, as men and women lost their heads for only uttering words that could be interpreted as anti-revolutionary. But in the years after, the efficient execution method was kept and remained in use for over a century, and it was even used during the Second World War. But the last man and woman executed on the guillotine was actually a lot more recent than you would believe, and it occurred within living memory. This is the executions of the last man and woman guillotined in France, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Germaine Leloy Godfroy was born on the 18th of May 1917 inside of France, and she would work as a young woman as a coal merchant from Bayeux. She married Albert Leloy, and the pair would work together on their family business. But her victim would be her husband. However, it's believed that Germaine Godfroy had fallen in love with another man, who was slightly younger than her, and who was a clerk of their coal business, and with this, Germaine then planned to murder her husband, and then run the business with her lover. Five days before the murder, she asked her lover to sharpen an axe, and also shorten its handle, meaning it would be easier for her to swing. She then hid this in a pile of wood, and she brought this into her house, and she then hid the axe yet again inside of a crate, waiting for the moment that she would strike, killing her husband. On the 10th of December 1947, in the evening, around 7pm, Germaine gave her lover all of the savings that she had, around 82,000 francs. She said to him, hide it, I will say that I was robbed. She then entered the family home, she was planning to disguise the crime as a random robbery, which had gone terribly wrong. Germaine wielded the axe, and shortly after speaking with her lover, she carried out the brutal attack and murder of her husband. Her husband was instantly killed with the onslaught, and she smashed him twice on the head whilst he slept with the axe, and the crime was incredibly brutal. Very soon after, her husband's body was discovered, and with this Germaine and her lover Raymond were caught and were arrested. But it would be a very different axe that would fall upon Germaine Godfroy. The pair were both brought to trial, and Raymond received a prison sentence of ten years, but Germaine would not be so lucky, and she was sentenced to death, as she was considered the mastermind, and she was the one, ultimately, that carried out the attack. She was then transported to Angers prison to await her death date with the guillotine and also the executioner. She would be executed by an executioner with the nickname The Man from Paris. Regional executioners had been abolished in the centuries before, but then there was only one chief executioner and he was ordered to live in the French capital. Because of this, the executioner, Jules Henri Desfourneau, was summoned from Paris and he had a long history of being a headsman, and also his family had been executioners. Some executioners were despised by the French population, but they did not mind coming to watch the proceedings and the execution, like in the medieval times, but they certainly did not want to be friends with someone who took the life of another person, or an executioner. Jules Henri de Fourneau had executed dozens of people throughout the years, but Germaine Leloy Godfroy would be the last woman who was executed by a guillotine in France. The executioner would also be the man that performed the last public execution in France, with the German serial killer Eugène Wiedmann being strapped to the device and the wooden board before the blade was released. At the time in public, a lot of the audience would behave shockingly when watching an execution, and they would take photographs of the proceedings and also they would become rather riotous. Because of this, executions in public at the time were banned, and this stopped the centuries tradition of public execution in France. Germaine Leloy Godfroy asked for clemency, following her death sentence, but this was not granted. Germaine knew the end was coming, and she was not informed that she would die until it was time to take her final walk 
to the execution chamber. At 4.30am on the 21st of April 1949, Germaine Leloy Godfroy's time was up. The ageing executioner was ready to perform the final execution of a woman in France on the guillotine. Germaine spoke with a priest and she attended Mass before writing one final letter and she then underwent the toiletta de condemned. This was the ordeal where the hair of the condemned was trimmed and cut and her neck and clothes were prepared for the blade. Traditionally condemned people during this were given a final cigarette and a glass of rum if they wanted it, but Germaine refused this. But the execution would be slightly delayed, as at the time a convict under French law could not be executed. They had to be formally paroled by the justice system in the custody of the executioner. But then amendments to the paperwork were made, and the execution went ahead, and the guillotine was finally prepared. It was said that she, turned pale and dressed in science, helped by the two inmates who shared her cell. Following this, Germaine Godfroy would enter the execution chamber where the guillotine was found. She was then attached to the wooden board, which was then slid under the guillotine blade. The executioner then made a few final checks and preparations before he released the blade and it fell, taking the head clean off Germaine Godfroy the brutal murderer who slaughtered her husband with an axe. The guillotine blade fell at 5.50am, just over an hour after she'd been told that she was going to die. Germaine Godfroy was a brutal murderer who became the last woman who was executed on the guillotine in France. Her execution was performed in private inside of a prison, but there had been a number of witnesses who were gathered who were close to her deceased husband, and these men and women would look on as the executioner secured her in place, below the blade. Her execution took a matter of seconds, and it was done with ruthless efficiency, and the same efficiency that executed a French king, a French queen, and thousands of other people during the French Revolution. Hamido Jeanne Duby was born in Tunisia on the 22nd of September 1949, but around 1968 he then moved to France, and to afford to live he was working inside of a grocery store. He later had other jobs such as a landscaper, but in 1971 he had an accident whilst working. His leg got caught in a tractor, and led to him losing two thirds of his right leg, and also this left him struggling to find work. But in 1973, a 21-year-old woman who was named Elizabeth Busquet met Jeanne Duby. The pair had met whilst he was recovering in hospital from his amputation, and she would later file a complaint that he had tried to force her into prostitution. Because of this, Hamida was arrested, and he was released from police custody in spring 1973, but it was clear he was trying to make a business becoming a pimp. He lured two young girls to become close to him, and then he forced them into this, and he would benefit financially from their prostitution but he would take vengeance against the very woman who accused him of crimes in the first place. On the 3rd of July 1974, he abducted Elizabeth Brusquet, and he took her to his home. Whilst here, the other girls were there, and in front of them he beat her severely and terribly, and he stubbed a lit cigarette all over her body. Brusquet by this time was still alive, and she managed to survive the horrific ordeal, but then Hamida took her by car to the outskirts of Marseille, and then he strangled her, killing her. When he arrived back home, he threatened the two girls in his house not to say anything about what they saw, but Elizabeth's body was then discovered in a shed by a young boy four days later. But Hamida was not initially arrested, and he went on the offensive again, and tried to kidnap another young girl a month later, but she managed to escape and then reported him to the police. He was arrested and was accused of a number of charges including torture and murder, and also assault and premeditated violence. He was brought to court on the 24th of February 1977, around three and a half years after he killed Elizabeth. His defence was focused around the fact he'd lost most of his legs six years before, and his lawyer said that his behaviour and mind was heavily affected by this. It was claimed that the injury made him a different man, and turned him against society making him a very dangerous individual. He also was said had an issue with alcohol abuse, and this was raised at court. 
but the day after he was brought to court, he was sentenced to death for his crimes and the murder. He tried to appeal, but this was rejected. He even tried to get a pardon, but on the early morning of the 10th of September 1977, Hamida was told he had not been given a reprieve from the French president. One witness to the execution documented the final execution by guillotine. It was said, The group stopped beside one of the tables. The prisoner, Hamida, was seated on a chair. His hands were locked behind his back with handcuffs. A guard gave him a filter cigarette. He started smoking without saying a thing. He was young, very dark hair, neatly styled. His face was rather handsome, with even features, but he was pallid and had dark circles under his eyes. He looked neither stupid nor brutish, simply a handsome young man. He smoked and complained immediately that his handcuffs were too tight. A guard approached to try to loosen them. He complained again. At this moment I noticed the executioner standing behind him, accompanied by two assistants. He was holding a cord. Originally it was intended to replace the handcuffs with the cord, but in the end it was decided to just remove them, and the executioner said something horrible and tragic. See, you're free. It's said to shiver down my spine. The prisoner continued to smoke his cigarette, which was nearly finished, and then he was given another. He requested his lawyers approached. He spoke to them as quietly as possible, before the executioner's two assistants were standing right by him, and it was as if they wanted to steal his last moments as a living man. He gave a piece of paper to them who tore it at his request, and he gave an envelope to the other. He spoke to them very little. There was one either side of him and they did not speak to each other. The wait for the execution continued. He requested the prison director ask him a question about what would happen to his possessions. The second cigarette was finished. A quarter of an hour had already passed. A young and friendly guard approached with a bottle of rum and a glass. He asked the prisoner if he wanted a drink and then poured him half a glass. The prisoner began to drink slowly. He understood that his life would end when he finished drinking. He spoke a little more with his lawyers. He called back to the guard who gave him the rum and asked him to gather up little pieces of paper that the lawyer had torn up and thrown to the ground. It was at that moment that everything became confused. This man is going to die, he knows it. He knows that he can do nothing but delay the end by a few minutes. And he became almost like a child that would do anything to delay bedtime. A child who knows he will be treated indulgently and who makes use of it. The prisoner continued to drink his rum slowly in little sips. He called the imam, who came over and spoke to him in Arabic. He responded with a few words, also in Arabic. The glass was nearly empty. In a last attempt, he requested another cigarette. But the executioner was becoming impatient and he interrupted. We've already been nice to him. Very humane. We have to get this over and done with. A source of embarrassment came over the assistants. About 20 minutes had passed since the prisoner sat down in his chair. 20 minutes. So long yet so short. The request for his last cigarette brought back the reality. The identity of the time which had just passed. We had been patient. We stood waiting for 20 minutes, whilst the prisoner seated expressed wishes, which were immediately granted. We allowed him to be the master of that time. It was his possession. Now another reality was appearing. That time was being taken back from him. The last cigarette was denied, and to get it over and done with, he was hurried to finish his glass. He drank the last sip, passed the glass to the guard. Immediately, one of the executioner's assistants took a pair of scissors from his shirt pocket and began to cut the collar off the prisoner's blue shirt. The executioner signalled that the cut was not large enough, so to simplify things, the assistant made two big cuts to the shoulders of the shirt and removed the entire shoulder section. Quickly, his hands were tied behind his back with the cord. He was helped up. The guards opened a door in the corridor. The guillotine appeared opposite the door. Almost without hesitating, I followed the guards, who were pushing the prisoner, and I entered the room, or rather a courtyard, where the machine stood. Beside it was an open brown wicker basket. Everything went very quickly. His body was practically thrown down, but at that moment I turned away, not out of fear, but by a sort of instinctive and deep-rooted modesty. I heard a dull sound. I turned around, blood, lots of blood, very red blood. The body had toppled into the basket. In a second, a life had been cut. The man who had spoken less than a minute earlier was nothing more than blue pyjamas in a basket. A guard took out a hose. One has to erase the evidence of a crime very quickly. I felt nauseous, but I controlled myself. I had a feeling of cold indignation. We went into the office where a report was being written. 
and it was being carefully verified. Hamida Shandubi was executed inside the walls of the prison at the age of 27, and he would go down in history as the final person to be lawfully executed by beheading in the Western world. He was also the last person executed in the Western world by the guillotine, and his execution would bring an end to the brutality of the device, which took thousands of lives inside of France. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.